Hello and welcome to my channel and I am Stephanie and this is the week for June 24th through the 30th weekly wrap up. As I said this is the fourth and final week of June and here is what I read last week. We're just jumping right into things this week yeah. So uh, the first book that I finished last week was The Upside of Falling Blue Line Duet number one by Megan Quinn. This is a contemporary and oh, so Megan Quinn usually gives me lots of rom-coms but this one is definitely contemporary. It's gonna pull at your heartstrings. I give this book five humongous stars. Oh so many stars. I read it as an arc and this follows Kobe and Rory and Kobe is a soon be or in the middle of his first year well, not first year. He is a cadet at the Air Force Academy. And Rory is sort of a townie, I guess you could say, but not really since they both grew up in the town but never really met. And Kobe is very straight-laced, has his dreams in his grasp and knows what he wants to do. So this is sort of a military romance. And both of them have histories and it's very interesting to see how they maneuver between those histories and the baggage that they have and things like that and it's just such a beautiful story. It pulls everything that I love, military and pretty much the accuracy of the military is not over the top, it's not too lacking, it's just so good. It was so good and by the end of it I just needed to know what was going to happen and like I said, it's a duet. Ugh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Broke my heart. Hopefully the second book puts my heart back together. We will see. But it's very emotional. Very, very emotional. The next book I read was Our Unscripted Story by L.A. Fior. And this is a contemporary as well. I give this book five stars. I had it as an arc and finally got to read it listen to it on audiobook and oh my god L.A. Fior has this amazing way of finding narrators that all encompass the accents that this that these her characters need and in this one Grayson is a Irish young man who comes to the state to pursue his art and to live with his grandfather and oh oh I love the story so much so very much. Alexis is a young girl who has an unknown past and LA does this beautiful beautiful job of carrying you through a lifetime for their story Grayson and Alexis. They meet when they are very young and things don't necessarily go their way. They're not like instantly together and they have troubles and they have things that go on and things that they need to learn about their past and it's just so good. It was so amazing and if you can listen to it on audiobook, oh my gosh, I totally suggest that. The next book I read was Browning and Roses by T. King Frazier and I placed this book in fantasy. Um, I listened to it for the Romance Roundabout and I give this book four stars. I listened to it on audiobook as I said. It is a sort of Beauty and the Beast retelling slash reimagining because it follows similarly to the story of Beauty and the Beast where Beauty goes and she um stumbles upon this castle and there's a beast but this one has a little bit of a twist and I was very surprised at this twist. Your main character is actually named Brawny, not Beauty and there is a beast that is involved with it but like I said it there's a twist and I don't want to tell you about the twist but it's so good. It was I was very engaged in it. I thought oh I'm just gonna fly through it and you know oh I have another retelling under my belt. No big deal. But this one kept me like enthralled the whole entire time. I loved it. And the house, oh house, house was was amazing. I loved house. And if you listen to the story or if you read the story, you will understand what I'm talking about by house. So sweet. The next book I read was A Good Marriage by Stephen King. 
read this for Romance Roundabout for Mystery. I place this in Mystery slash Horror, and I give it two stars. Oh my goodness. Listen to it on audiobook, and if this is how Stephen King writes his characters, especially his female characters, there were so many times that I wanted to DNF this, but I was like, no, it's a short story, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to listen to it because it's a short story and it's a tick off on my romance roundabout being a mystery and uh, duh! But it was so male chauvinistic that it just it made my skin crawl. I was just like, why? Why is this how you portray your female characters? And there was so much potential for this female character, Darcy, to be like strong. So what happens is Darcy is in this marriage with this man named Bob for like 25 years and then she stumbles upon some secrets. And when Bob figures out that she knows what's going on, He's like, oh, you're stupid, you're an idiot, you just, I was like, wow, wow. And then she does something that I'm like, yeah, get some, Darcy, yes, get some. And then another man walks into this situation is like, you're an idiot for not knowing. Really? Really? So, I I'm... Some of the things that I've heard about Stephen King's books, if I'm feeling that I'm not feeling this and I might have to reevaluate some of the things that I like about his movie and TV adaptations of his books, because I don't remember him being so male chauvinistic and just rude about things. Then the final book that I read for the week was Pucked Up, Pucked Number 2 by Helena Hunting. And this is definitely a rom-com. I give it four stars. I listened to it on audiobook. This a book follows Buck and Sunny. Sunny is the sister to, oh my goodness, Alex from the first book, Pucked. And Buck is the stepbrother to our female character in book number one as well. So Buck and Sonny have sort of this connection, but Buck is a, 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 is a whore. He's a hockey whore. And he is very known for running through puck bunnies, which by the way are girls that like to hook up with hockey players. And Sunny is very all natural and wildernessy and things like that. Very clean and into nature and into healthy things for her body and things. Yeah. Sunny is very funny. I loved her. She was very entertaining. I loved Buck in showing how big of a heart he has. And he has some issues of his own. He's dyslexic. And oh, that just, it just grabbed my little heart. And I was just like, oh. How could you not feel bad for him with some of the situations that he ends up getting into? And just, uh, it was such a fun, fun book. And I can't wait to get to the rest of the series. So those are the books that I read for the last week of June. Can't wait to get into July, which, by the way, I changed my genre -thon theme for July. Instead of doing one author that I need to finish their collection for, I am doing stories about independence and or like independent stories because July in the America and most of the countries have like their independence day someday in July, which is really weird. I found that very strange when I started researching what July is all about and stuff like that. So many countries have independence day this month, next month. So yeah, that's the stories that I'll be doing. Why I'm telling you on this video, I have no clue, but that's probably because... July is like right around the corner. Oh, wait, up! Oh, it's the first, first of July when I'm putting this video up. That's why. Anyways, have you read any of those books that I just named off? Let me know what you thought about them in the comments. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel. Thank you for watching and we will see you guys later.